Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Luke Moody. I'm the creative director of Bannon Normal Devices. Uh, pronouns he, him. And I'm in a room with a gray wall, uh, lamp behind me, a white man with a, with a mustache. Uh, in this episode of Deeper, our weekly series at Abandoned Normal Devices, I'd like to welcome Anita Fontaine, an artist from New Zealand or based in New Zealand. Uh, she's a speculative future artist and creative director whose work spans across many technical forms, augmented reality, film, gaming, fashion, and, and many more, uh, all unique uh, to her own sensibility and an adaptation of those forms. Uh, Anita will begin by introducing her project, her commission for abandoned normal devices this year is Blue Violet River. Uh, so welcome, Anita. Hello, uh, my name is Anita Fontaine, pronoun she, her. I am sitting in a wooden chair with a uh, rainforest background and a blue shirt, um, medium length hair, blue eyes, and um, white skin. I, I'm really happy to talk about my project, The Blue Violet River. Um, it's been a, a long production process and really excited to present the project in um, around 10 days opening in Liverpool as part of the End Festival. Um, I would like to just take you through some of the inspiration and ideas that kind of uh, led me to create this project. Um, I do have to caveat that we're currently working on the project and the real life version of the project will be fully, will be able to fully, be fully experienced um, in Liverpool, in the location um, on a boat, a ferry that you can board and take the uh, experience. So what I'm going to share today is just more teasers to give you some insight into the, the project. Um, so I initially wanted to take the conventional guided tour that you get when you board a ferry in a city location and I wanted to transform it into something magical that weaves together all of my interests as an artist um, currently. So those themes like science fiction, environmental themes, as well as feeding off the local architecture and create a kind of future fairy tale, uh, an alternate version of the future. And this is all seen from the perspective of uh, the River Mersey Ferry. And that's, that perspective, um, I'll tell you a little bit more about as we move forward. So this is the vessel. You might know this um, boat already if you are in Liverpool. Um, and the idea is that we're going to use this as kind of like a, a canvas and be building. Um, so it's, it's currently an artwork, um, the Razzle Dazzle ship, and we're going to be building layers essentially on, on top of this um, for my experience, the Blue Violet River. And what I really wanted, I was interested in having people feel like they're starring in this experience, you know, that the passengers kind of become part of the experience on board. And to do that, it's not only a digital experience. I'm really interested in incorporating sculpture and theater and sound design, um, as well as augmented reality layers to create this surreal guided tour um, and I really want to encourage people to leave their perceptions of reality ashore and be able to just be open-minded um, into what this version of the future might be even though it's a fantastical kind of vision. So the story that I've been working on it has about 10 chapters and because the the boat tour itself is about 50 minutes long. What happens is these chapters are kind of distributed uh, throughout the tour. So as you, the, as the ferry cruises around the river, each chapter and each part of the story unfolds as a visual expression through augmented reality or through theater or through sound. And so what we're doing is we're 
essentially transforming and evolving the Liverpool shoreline in real time as you look through these viewfinders. So this was just like a, a speculative idea of what the viewfinders might look like. We have a more advanced version that incorporates sculpture um, that is going to be part of the live experience that's launching in a few weeks. And essentially what you're looking at is um, a, an augmented reality. We've, we've customized tablets essentially that are it's running software that allows us to layer these augmented reality chapters depending on the geolocation of the ferry as it physically um, drives down the river. And these will be fitted to different parts of the deck. So there'll be multiple stations that people can kind of view these chapters outside either sides of the deck. And um, we're gonna also have theater elements. So essentially we've got these chapters, these, these augmented reality chapters that form like the basis of the experience. And then there'll be two kind of interstitial moments in the journey where we have theater elements. Um, we're working with a live theater production company to create this part of the experience. And so I'd like to just talk a little bit about the story and kind of my inspiration behind the narrative. And I was really interested in thinking about what the world might look like once we've hopefully overcome some of these issues that we're dealing with with climate change and rising sea levels. And I wanted to think about what is what could this future hold for us as humanity and how we could um, essentially use hybrid uh, engineering and, and different ecological mysticism practices and kind of return to our pagan roots a little bit and um, kind of be living in like a different kind of society completely. So this is the place that the Blue Violet River is set in this kind of atmosphere. And so it's a strange and magical place where the citizens practice, practice ecological mysticism and expand their minds through a holographic consciousness. And humans have managed to transform into peaceful vegetables thanks to the effects of organic self-engineering. They've been freed from a greedy and destructive past and they now worship the core consciousness of the planet manifested through sound frequencies. But there's still an, a looming kind of threat. Um, and so there are these eyes as part of the experience that are kind of acting as like a surveillance uh, element in the experience. And so as you're in the, as you're experiencing the journey, you'll have like this sense that you're being watched and, and part of the, I wanted there to be kind of a sense of, um, I don't know, almost like tension in the, the narrative to give it like just a sense of like um, a story arc that I guess um, could, could be more gripping as the story kind of continues. Uh, I'd just like to show you some of the, the art uh, that we're creating at the moment. And so we have these 10 chapters and I've been working with an amazing 3D artist um, called Ignace uh, on these chapters. And we have kind of come up with these looping animations essentially that some of, some of them have characters that are very much from this world, this future um, fantasy world that I just talked about. And some are kind of a more abstract hybrid uh, creature that's that's more from like a fairy tale world. Um, but these will be paired with sound design and the, a voiceover of a captain who kind of going back to that original idea of how do we augment this conventional guided tour. Um, and so I'm kind of keeping the captain as a presence in this journey, but instead of saying, look to the left and you'll see the Liver building, she'll be saying, look to the left, you see these futuristic nuns that are using um, flowers to pedal their boats. So I'd like to, I really wanted to, to kind of hack that kind of conventional 
idea and that format that people are kind of expected um, when they're on board a boat like this, but kind of give it a twist was essentially my uh, inspiration. So yes, yeah, so one of these chapters is the graces. And so these nuns, these are nuns um, from a different dimension <laughs> and they worship the core consciousness of the planet, practicing eco uh, ecological mysticism the mutualism between plants and humans has allowed access to the limitless power of the imagination and the graces can now bend reality to the will. So that's just like a sample of kind of the voiceover and the captain as they're guiding you and you'll be prompted to look through the viewfinders to be able to see um, this. And this is another chapter kind of teaser and this is the hand of the sages. So this is patrolling the waters and the environment. And there's amulets that each represent one of the six senses. And these powerful symbols deliver a symbolic perception for all citizens and keep a watchful eye out for the corporate cult. So these corporate cults are fossil fueled brand oligarchies responsible for poisoning of the planet driven solely by profit and power. Although the brands may have been overthrown by the consciousness of the plant, human hybrid, they still exist, biding their time deep within, beneath the waves of Blue Violet River. And so, um, yeah, you will kind of be taken on this journey that's really a mix between visual, audio, theater, and they're all kind of layered and staggered um, to immerse you in this alternate, reality. And these are the eyes that I talked about earlier. These are the, the eyes that are watching, listening, recording, mining, hiding, waiting. Obviously, I'm trying to make a statement on the surveillance cult culture that we're now finding ourselves in as a society. But I'm also just wanting to be a bit more playful um, to inspire people to kind of question these realities and these technologies that we're these issues that we're facing, um, which are actually quite serious, but I would like to kind of approach them in a, a playful, um, a different kind of manner, I suppose. Um, this is another kind of, I guess, evolution of the eyes. It's a serpent that um, essentially follows you around on the boat. And so you could be looking out through one of the viewfinders and essentially you see the serpent um, and he switches from happy to sad in an instant. And um, yeah, he's kind of freaky. And then you have a moment, um, which is one of the final chapters. I hope I'm not giving any of this away for people that might be able to go on the journey because I think that, um, yeah, this is one of my favorite chapters, essentially, where you've kind of gone through this journey and you're able to kind of understand how things might work in a cyclical way. And the return is kind of a return to the source where the characters in this world are kind of being drawn up into this kind of cosmic loop. Um, and that's a, a chapter that will take place towards the end of the, the journey. Um, and it's one of kind of the closing experiences that you will, yeah. And I think that that might be the end of my, my teaser that I wanted to give. I didn't want to give um, too much away, but hopefully I've given enough away to help um, understand a little bit more about the project. Yeah, thank you, Anita. It's really exciting and I look forward to um, it unfolding and at the end of June. Um, Speaking of kind of nuns from other dimensions and layered realities, and, and quite often in your work, literally augmented realities, uh, an existing reality with something added to it. Um, your, your work often plays with uh, a kind of a balance between where we are now and where we might be in a different dimension, whether that's the future, whether it's a warping of where we are uh, as individuals. Um, and, and most often through an individual experience of that, that technology or means of um, experiencing your, your vision. 
almost like a psychedelic trip in a way. What do you want from that process? Uh, do, do you want people to kind of uh, recalibrate in a sense their, their way uh, of seeing afterward or is it for you an interruption of, of the existing world? Yeah, I would. I think that's a good question and probably something I forgot to kind of mention that I'd, I'm really interested in kind of being part of this transformation of consciousness, you know, that is helping there to be like a positive change and a positive influence in the world. And I think with my work, I just want to kind of trigger some sense of that in, in the brain of the person that's experiencing it and perhaps introduce topics um, that might be new in a way that isn't um, too overwhelming, but also expose them to um, frequencies, like some of the sound design that I've been creating is, I, it's been shown that some of these um, sound effects and like different calibrated sounds can have kind of a healing effect. So I think if anything, I would like to kind of inspire people, but also create like kind of a, a calming, um, soothing sensation. So I would kind of want them to go through the whole journey of potentially being activated by the ideas that I'm presenting, but also hopefully being soothed a little bit in terms of like the anxiety levels that we're all kind of dealing with, with, you know, eco grief and, and different issues. Um, I just want there to be like a hopeful sensibility um, after people have experienced my work. Hmm. And although the works, they, they involve uh, collaborations with, 3D artists in this case, animators. Um, and the aesthetic is, is often in, in a, a kind of, you know, more surreal realm. There's a definite like sculptural feel to what you place within landscapes and almost, yeah, a, a tactile interaction. Could you perhaps for audience uh, members who, who aren't familiar with your previous works, talk a little bit about your, your journey into making works that are, um, I guess more, yeah, more interactive and, and more tactile. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I come from a background that's quite diverse, um, like creating video games and virtual reality experiences, but also all the way through to kind of commercial motion graphics posts and, and fashion work and advertising. So I think all of that kind of feeds into my uh, aesthetic that I'm playing in currently. And I, I really want it to be, kind of a familiar enough visual language, like almost playing into that gaming culture and even the NFT culture that's emerging in terms of like the, the language of three dimensions and avatars and these virtual spaces that we're becoming so kind of adapted to and using that as kind of like my canvas and a way to kind of sculpt new ideas you know so it's almost like that the clay is is kind of the 3d programs and the textural applications and there's like a psychedelic influence but I want it to feel like there's a familiar um element to it so it's it's not um almost like it feels like it fits in with pop culture enough to to even disrupt that so playing with a familiar language, but then using it to kind of subvert um, with some of the content and ideas. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, and you, you mentioned like the technical form um, as being this malleable thing, almost like a clay. And I think elsewhere I read that you self-described as a technical chameleon in a way. You, you adapt to the environment that um, the project needs and, and collaborate uh, as, as needed. Could you Talk a little bit about the specific collaborations on this project with, for example, Ignas, um, and the experience of, uh, of course, in this year, being very unique of having to work remotely um, to to envision the project. Yeah, it was it was pretty challenging on the time zone um, issues that we had with the team. Obviously, I was working with Ignas, um, who's an incredible three D generalist and artist based in Lithuania 
and also with the AND team in Liverpool and London and Manchester. I have a, a, the creative technologist, Grigor, on this project is based in London. So obviously having to be able to access Liverpool itself to do testing on the river and the ferry has kind of been a bit of a, an issue um, during COVID times and just, yeah, the challenges of it being this digital project, but it actually has so many tactile physical components that need real life support in a weird way. And um, yeah, it's just been, it's been kind of amazing uh, process really, because it's this kind of thing, I think this kind of augmented reality boat tour that incorporates sculpture, theater and sound design, it's quite a, a new idea. Like I don't, it hasn't been done before in this particular way. So I think in terms of, of that, we, we had many different like kind of technical and creative hurdles to overcome and try and solve and think of the best possible solution, you know, with me also being based um, in New Zealand. So on the time zone, just being off, but um, I'm really happy with, with what we've achieved. And I, I hope that it's just the first of many of these types of experiences. I think that now we're starting to become accustomed to these layers of augmented reality and, and virtual reality just being there in our world and ubiquitous. And I think that we've just got to put, make sure that these experiences are the right kinds of experiences, you know? And I think that, um, I just want to create beautiful, beautiful experiences for people and um, something new that they haven't had before and an experience they haven't had before is kind of like my ultimate gain, my ultimate aim for this project. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's certainly in a, in an unexpected space on the Mersey Ferry with the aesthetic of the project and your um, working process with Ignas, there is a, um, yeah, this, this, as I mentioned, a kind of psychedelic look to the work. And obviously Liverpool has its own history of uh, psychedelia, particularly in music um, and the aesthetic that that brought out. Uh, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about the, the influences of where those images um, started to emerge from and whether it was a kind of a basis of your kind of sketches and then Ignace kind of, uh, I, I guess, gave a body to those, those ideas and, and sketches. Um, or whether he brought his own aesthetic to the work too? Yeah, um, I, I think I, I've had a lot of time kind of considering what this project might look like. And I've been through many different iterations of it, potentially not being three-dimensional, maybe more illustrative based. So I've had a lot of time kind of thinking about it and what I arrived at was really, I just wanted to create kind of a future forward aesthetic. Um, and it was really important to me that we get a very kind of luxurious, kind of high end, high quality 3D look to the augmented reality because I'm, I'm a little bit turned off by a, a lot of the AR out there that just is kind of quickly done. So. I really wanted a craft person, you know, like Ignas to work with. And he's, um, together we put so much detail into every little part of this project. And it really um, started with me doing all the concept art and Ignas literally helping bring that to life. And I've got a background as a texture artist. So I was jumping in and doing textures, which are also a big part of, um, the look that you see here. Um, but I think that the, the whole psychedelic influence, I, I was influenced by Liverpool culture and the history and thinking about the music culture there and kind of the grassroots activist culture. And I also, I guess the, how industrial the past was and trying to think of like, if I could imagine anything for the city of Liverpool this beautiful reality where like humans have essentially kind of moved away from this industry and they're now, you know, worshipping the, the earth's 
core consciousness again. It was, I quite liked the juxtaposition of those, of the kind of having the industrial background, but seeing these beautiful kind of futuristic um, psychedelic animations play out essentially against that backdrop was something that um, I was really excited to try. Yeah, and it, it almost takes a, a slightly spiritual layer, the experience, and, and there are some surprises too for people who are going to experience the project with a kind of a performative embellishment to um, their journey on, on the Mersey too. Um, I wondered if you could talk a little bit just to, to close about your, your own relationship to water and your first experience of uh, being on the Mersey Ferry, whether there is, um, yeah, whether there's a spiritual layer to that too. Yeah, I mean, I think that it is a, a spiritual place. You know, I think that um, it, it is currently worshipped um, by some members of the Liverpool Society. You actually told me about that. There's like a, a group, um, I think it's a Hindu group in Liverpool who currently uh, actively worship the, the Mersey River. And I think that that really sparked something for me. I was trying to imagine what it would have been like as well, like drawing from the past. So drawing from thousands of years ago, what the relationship might've been like, because for me, it's not all about looking to the future. I really wanna be inspired by the past and, and the simplicity perhaps of this kind of relationship that we had with the earth and the elements and, and the beauty and being able to kind of tap into that to return to that relationship um it's almost like a yeah it's like an ache that I have in my heart when I kind of see you know waterways being polluted and the way that we've kind of treated these sacred bodies these sacred water bodies and the sacred earth and I think um there's probably a bit of a subliminal part of this project where I was trying to project this let's take care of the earth <laughs> you know let's let's kind of um I'm going to project this new society uh in the in the hope that we can kind of circle back to a version of the past but that is is very much future forward and inclusive for everyone but where we take care of each other and and these sacred water bodies I think that that was um my intention but I didn't want it to be like so heavy I wanted to kind of propose that kind of spiritual idea in a um a playful way that people could kind of was accessible and that's why I think I am drawn to using kind of the language of pop culture and video games and 3D to kind of communicate some of those ideas that might just seem a little bit like woo woo <laughs> to some people and I don't I don't want it to be like that because for me it's edgy and it's activist and it's punk as much as it is kind of this psychedelic spiritualism for me like because we're by hacking the the fairy experience that's kind of like I want that to be to feel like kind of an activist feeling you know of reinventing the possible futures that we have yeah, I think the work definitely has this, the, the fantastical layers of it, in a sense, evaporate from that reality. They're, they're like coming out of the, the sacredness of the river and the history of that, that environment. Um, that's all we've got time for in this week's Deeper. And I'd, I'd love to yeah, thank Anita for joining us. Blue Violet River will be uh, situated on the Mersey Ferry from the 24th to the 27th of June uh, this summer. Thank you for joining us, Anita. Thanks for having me. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye, everyone.